slash link name if it says natasha you go to four slash natasha you click on that link and then it will take you to a picture of natasha you like that picture and then you go back to the post you put all the instructions and then you share that post all those people who share that post will send some to take to go to the post and then all those people who like this picture with the most likes will send it to the person who is staring at us so they open it first and then to the competition today another competition we have is a passive Traffic, and as you get to your house, the roads are going to get 
narrower and narrower and narrower until the one in front of your house is probably just a thin little work. Okay? And that's exactly what your blood vessels are going to be like. When we look at our blood vessels, our arteries, be careful when you use the definition. Arteries do carry oxygenated blood, 99% of it. So when you look for a definition for arteries, we don't say arteries carry oxygenated blood. Because if last week you can remember when you did the heart, there's a bit of a, bit of a twist there, the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein. The artery carries deoxygenated and the vein carries oxygenated, if you remember. Okay? So what we do is arteries, I always say, remember, A for a wave. All right? A for a wave. And what do arteries do? They go away from the heart. Okay. Now when we look at the structure, and I've put a few diagrams up here, I've put a cross section and a transverse section up. When we look at the artery, the artery comes from the heart, all right? And its sole purpose, if I could say that, is to take that oxygen and it's to pump, all right? High pressure to pump the blood right, right to that small little cell in your small cell, okay? So what I say, pump. When I say pump, pump means doing work. And when it comes to work, the artery, all right, if you have a look over here, if you have to go to this diagram, it's much easier. That is a layer of muscle. Okay, and if you have a look at the vein over here, it's a layer of muscle. So notice that there is a difference. Okay, the artery is the one that does the work. And because it does, those of you who do a lot of work, your muscles will be set up. Right, so the artery does the work it pumps to get all the blood away. Okay, so as I said, it goes and now it starts to branch. You know, in this, I think you have this sort of disease of comparison big, bigger, bigger, small, smaller, smaller. Okay, you have the same here an artery, a big blood vessel, narrows down to an arteriole, which is a small artery, and then we get to our capillary. And if you have a look over here at our capillary, let me just say, you'll see thick, not so thick, it's a very thin wall. It's one layer, one layer. Now you can imagine, when the oxygen and everything gets here, and here we need to get it to the cell, right? In grade 11, you're going to look at gaseous exchange. When all of this is in the cell, the cells are small, right? The capillary needs to bring oxygen and gases to the cell. What would make it more efficient? A thick surface, a thick surface, I imagine. Oh, the food's got to go through this layer, then the food's got to go through the next layer, then it's got to go through another layer. Or, if the food and the oxygen is one layer, into the cell. Okay? Makes more sense. You can get it in. Efficient means quickly. Right? You can get it in and you can get it out. So the capillary is one, one layer thick. Now, the capillary also has, if we have a look, you'll see just now, it's got little pores. Right, and that is important because we're going to look at the lymphatic system and that's what capillary is going to have for us its way. Now we've collected, we've done everything that we need to do. So oxygen, right? and nutrients is given to the cells, and what does the cells do back? We're going to do this in much more detail in grade 11. The cells now need to take carbon dioxide, all right, and what else do they? Waste product. Now, if you have a look, all right, at our vein, you're going to notice much wider lumen, so it's a lot, it's not under this pressure. It doesn't have this muscle as its driving force, all right. And now you need to know it's also going against gravity. And remember when you're pumping from the heart, heart force, heart pressure going down, now it's coming up, and you know what it's like to, to come uphill, it's an absolute mission. All right, now because of that, we need to have little special things. You will see the veins have valves. All right, the valves have the same function as they did in the heart. So when the blood moves up, the valves close to stop. Backflow. Right. Remember last week you would have done the the um, 
the bypass bit, sidecast bit, the extraventricular valve. Right, and their whole function was to suck the blood from flowing back. Okay, so now we go from our capillaries. Right, we don't go straight bang, whack bang into a large one. We go slowly in again. So a capillary will become a larger venule, which will then be a vein. And what do veins do? They take the blood back, all right, to the heart. So what do arteries do? They take blood away. What do veins do? They bring it back. And if we have a look at the structure over here, all right, we will see that each of them, the capillary, the, the artery, and the vein, each have their own little special, all right, um, structure which enables them to be able to function as they do. Okay, so please, one thing I would be, suggest that you do, right, is to draw a table where you actually compare the capillary, the vein, and the artery, right, and be able to compare the differences in structure, right, and also in function. So when I talk about function, I know blood carries, you can say here, the vein generally carries the oxygenated, capillary oxygenated blood. You can say how, all right, gas is exchanged, occurs at the capillary, etc. So in this draw up a table, you'll see on the notes, all right, in the notes, I've actually put it in a table for the differences between all the different blood blood vessels. Okay, now let's go on to this new circulatory system, and this is your lymphatic system. This is your lymphatic system over here. This is your circulatory system. Why did I put a picture of both of them up? I wanted to show you the difference, okay? We spoke about this circulatory, our cardiovascular, right, our double circulatory with our blood system. Remember, I keep going about the word closed, okay? Can you see wherever a vein will join with a capillary, join with an artery, it's always continuous. Now, if you look on this side, right, you will notice, look at all these points. They don't join up with each other. It's if they just start somewhere, all right? And what you have over here is your lymphatic system. Right, and in your lymphatic system, you're going to see you have lymph vessels. Right, you've got areas where there's a collection of lymph. Those are your lymph nodes. All right, and the lymphatic system is different. All right, lymph is different to blood. Now, if we go a little bit closer, all right, into the diagram. This is a very important diagram, all right, that I want you to be able to, to even draw. I want you to have a look. I'm going to see if I can use the different colors. Right here we have, have a look what we've got over there. Okay, all right, they use different colors. I'm going to just quickly let me erase it because I actually want to use blue and want not. Okay, what we're going to have is if we have, all right, our arterial. Here we've got an arteriole, all right, pink, leading into a capillary. Here we've got a vein, a vein, remember, blue, all right, leading in. Then we have, let me see this, this capillary network, all the oranges. Okay, now, in green, can you see, they're called what we call blind endings. They just start. And like blood, you notice the blood always forms a continuous. Okay, now, the yellow. I know it looks like a cloud scribbling, just listen carefully. The yellow, all the cells in your body are bathed in this, what we call, tissue fluid. If I cut you up, I'll tell you you're not going to be that one. All right? You are not a juicy because of this tissue fluid. Okay, so what you need to have an idea of is we have these cells, right, 
and these cells are bathed in the spirit. Now, where does that fluid come from? All right. Now, when it comes to terminology, there are three terms. We have the blood plasma. We have got tissue fluid. And we have blood. Blood fluid. Okay? All right. Now, what ha- how are all of these? In, in some ways, they are actually the same thing, or depending on where they are. Okay, so what I have is, I have the large artery. Coming into the arterial, coming into the small, small, small capillary. Now, you know what happens when something big goes to something small. You've all been on the highway, then there's a traffic jam, all right? What happens is, all of a sudden, there's pressure in the capillaries. In the capillaries, they can't handle all this water coming in at once. Now, if you have listened carefully, remember I said in the beginning, the capillaries are whole, right? So what happens is, those capillaries, I'm going to see if I can maybe use a ring, right? Okay, so there we go. Those capillaries, the blue, what they do is, that fluid moves up. You see the yellow? That moves up. So the, the, the and what is, what moves out of the capillaries? Blood plasma. The cells don't move up. It's the water content of the water, right? It moves up. And when it moves up, it's going to the tissues. Because remember, water is essential for all these chemical reactions to occur. Now, that water, imagine if we kept on putting water in, putting water in, putting water in, it would look like the orange man, all right? Because we're just full with fluid, we're just full with fluid. Full, full with fluid. So now, this is leaving a drainage system. And that's exactly what the lymphatic system does. Right? It takes all of this tissue fluid, and the tissue fluid, so it was blood plasma, then it became tissue fluid, then the tissue fluid filtered into the lymph. Right? So it filters. So we make the water, we drain the water. It's almost like a water faucet. Okay? Make it, and then we drain it. And it drains into the lymphatic system, and the lymphatic system, yeah. Underneath, all right, your your um your subclavia, underneath your your clavicle, there's a vein, and that fluid then comes and joins in. Are we ready for the question? I wanted it just finished this. Remember we've spoken about the water gain, right? When you're finishing this section on the circulatory system, maybe some of you have restarted the ecology section, you're looking at biomes. There's a fun interactive game where you can win prizes. Remember, it's www.watergain.co.za. Belinda, our lady upstairs, she always reminds me of the man upstairs, all right? She says she wants to see me do the chicken dance. I said, no, you're not going to see me do the chicken dance. You've got to vote for me. <laughs> And only if I win the reason you should be on it. I'm going to fight and fight for it. Are we going to carry on? Okay. Yeah, just take that picture. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right? So what happens is it's pushed, valve closes. It's pushed up when you walk with your muscles, your feet. You remember lots of them are lower in your legs and, and areas of your body where lots of movement occurs. And that movement of the muscle, right, forms the pump right behind the lymphatic system. What is this tissue fluid? Okay. Remember I said to you now, we have a look. Okay. These are the cells, the tissues. Okay. Inside here, when the capillary, let me use it to when the capillary comes past, as I said, it's full with blood plasma. And it's so full that it seeps out. Now, if you think about blood plasma, blood plasma is water and a lot of dissolved substances. All right? That then bathes the cells. All right? And that we refer to as tissue fluid. That fluid that covers our cells. Okay. All right. Is that it? I was ready to go on. Well, it's changed the direction. If you have a look here, this picture explains when I spoke to you about drained excess fluid. Right? If that fluid is not drained, you'll see if you have a look at this lady's left over here, right? That is an excess lymphatic fluid. Sometimes you do get a, a you get a it's called erythrocytosis, right? Which is used a bacteria that blocks off the lymphatic gland, which causes this. But as you can see, you can see the swelling of the leg that caused by the fluid, the excess fluid, you're not getting it drained. So the fluid is accumulating and accumulating and not being drained back. Next year in grade 11, you're going to be looking at the digestive system. And inside the small intestine, you're going to find this little structure called a lac seal. It's a lymph gland. If you remember at the beginning of the year, we did biochemistry. Fat and water do not mix. Blood is made up mostly blood plasma, water. So if we stick the fat that our fat that we eat straight into our blood system, we're going to clog up our arteries, all right, right from the start. So we need to have fat transported in another system. So we take the fat and they get transported, all right, through the lymphatic system. Also, you will see there is a type of white blood cell that is produced called a lymphocyte. And these lymphocytes are white blood cells, and white blood cells have a role in our immunity, okay, against certain diseases. So the lymphocytes in lymph, so our lymph helps with the fight against the disease. Well, you'll see whenever you stick your glands over here as well. These are lymph glands underneath here. All right, they swell. Because what's happening? Your immune system kicking in. All right, the, the cells are being formed to be able to fight. All right, the disease. Now let's quickly go over, when it comes to the cardiovascular, um, I'm going to put it back there. If we come to the cardiovascular diseases, yeah, you, must, you need to have a general knowledge of things. When it comes to lots of the diseases, you will see they are usually interlinked, okay? What do we mean is, one of the things is high blood pressure. I don't know if you, any of you did your blood pressure when, when you do the heart. The heart has a, should have a blood pressure or of 120 over 80. But what does that mean? It's the pressure that is forced against or at the walls of your artery. The higher the pressure, that means the harder the heart is working. Now, high blood pressure, remember, it can cause the high makes your heart or I have to work a lot harder, which can cause other things like heart attacks like strokes, all right, those kinds. So when you look at the cardiovascular diseases, right, not always one symptom that fits one little block, you'll see that they very often interlink with each other. Okay? So high blood pressure, read about people if you're overweight, right, if you have diabetes, if you're smoking, right, all of those, if you have your improper diet, have lots of salt, all of that's going to bring about all of those things. Okay? But just have a general idea of the causes Heart attack, right? The again, a heart attack usually is when, when I put the atherosclerosis. What happens is, is the artery blocks with plaque. That's key. All right, you'll see it blocks. And when it blocks, what's going to happen? All right, either it's going to burst or it's going to stop blood 
and you're going to have certain areas of the heart that basically to die. Also be aware that there's this new technology, there are ways in which we can unblock block heart. You'll see here there's actually I'll put a question for us later in the on in the um later on we're gonna deal with a question where it's got to do with these kind of things. Here a balloon angioplasty when they put a balloon in and they inflate it for us hoping to clear the blockage. Here there's a stem or right, which they put in and then they or I to release it as you can see and it stretches open and basically to make sure that the, there is no blockage. Alright? Here a stroke occurs in the brain where we're either going to have the leaking of blood, right? Where the blood vessel burst forming right leaking on the brain, pressure, etc. Or we have a blood clot, right? And that blood clot obviously stops the brain, certain areas of the brain from receiving oxygen and they die. But usually this generally needs to have quite a good general knowledge of. Let's start with the question. Okay. As I said to you, when it comes to the questions on this section, first thing, be aware of the differences, structure, artery, vein, capillary, and their function. Right? Make sure you have the layers of the lymphatic system and you have a general knowledge about the different diseases. Also heart transplants, those kind of things. Chris Barnard being South African, the first heart transplant was done by South Africa. Right, which for us is quite significant and you might get a case study or something there. Okay, if we have a look here, there's diagrams A, B and C below show cross sections through three different sorts of vessels. They are not all drawn to the same scale. Okay, now, if we have a look here, the first thing that you need to do is just by looking at the structure you should be able to see which is which. Okay? This one over here, number A, we notice has a large muscle layer. Alright? What characterizes a large muscle layer? Number A would then be an artery. If you look at number B, it's small, it's thin, look at that, much smaller than the other two, it's very, very narrow, only one layer. That is going to be our capillary. Right, number C. Yes, it still has muscle because we still need to get the blood pumped to the heart, but it has less muscle than my artery. It has a larger lumen. So, what is that? That is then going to be our vein. Right, as I said to you, looking at the diagram, be able to identify it. Sometimes, they, as I've done here, just ask you for identification. Other questions they might say, give a reason. Okay. Now the next one goes back to biological skills. It says, determine the magnification of the drawing of blood vessel A. So all your working. Right. And I'm not swearing. Remember, it's the damn triangle. Drawing over actual. All right. Over magnification. Okay, so now I'm one thing. It says, what is your magnification? There you go. How do you work out magnification? The unit of measurement is half. Now this is how you work it out. You write M equals. Remember, this is a divide line, that is a times line. So M is B e over Alright, what is my drawing size? Read the question. Alright, they are not all drawn to the same scale. What is my drawing size? Now let me do. You take your ruler and you measure. Alright, you take your measure. Do you see this? That one. You take your ruler and you measure that distance. Now, as a clue, seen in front here is in millimeters, all right? Six to millimeters. So, what's my drawing size? I'm going to say, for example, all right, it's maybe two millimeters. Okay, what was my given? There we go. What is my actual? Here's my actual. It told me. It said to me. That is what it is. Five millimeters, all right? And then three divided by five. You get your answer, and the answer is not millimeters, it's 
time. Remember your triangle. If you any two of those, Hey, no. Question number, this is quite important. It says, state and explain. Right, not just state. State, so give a reason, and explain two ways in which a blood vessel of type B is well suited to its function. Okay, so it's a capillary. Right, what did I say in the beginning? Okay, it's thin. It has now its place. Okay, it's a single layer. Now let's go back to our blood, to our blood tissue, our mammalian tissue. All right, it's form of epithelium, but we call it endothelium. All right, single layer endothelium. Okay, what does that do? It makes exchange much more efficient. All right. Also, the reason. It is very, the layer system, it is very small. Okay, now, when blood goes through, so we'll do this again in grade 11. When blood travels through, the red blood cell just fits through there. So because it fits it through there, it's much easier for gaseous exchange to take place. So it's small, the red blood cell, right, fits perfectly. Enabling gaseous, gaseous exchange to take place. We could have also said it has pores. Why? So the blood plasma can seep through to become tissue fluid. All right, and that's to keep a constant internal balance. So there we come, right, with the reason why. Now, taking the question. A little bit up. Now let's take a look. Below is a photomicrograph of a transverse section of an artery. Alright? See here. Draw a large, low power plan diagram of the specimen in the photomicrograph above. Do not forget labels and the heading. Okay, so what you're basically going to do, I'm going to quickly go back here. I want you to remember. That's what they're asking you to draw. This is what they're asking you to draw. Okay? They're asking you to draw the lumen and then the different layers. The adventitia, right? The medi media, right? And you'll see over there. Sorry, I put it over. Right, the intima. So you guys might have different your teacher might give you different layers, but there you'll see the tunica intima is the, the layer in the inside, almost like the endothelial layer. Then your tunica media, that is your very large uh, um, muscle layer, and then your tunica externa, which is your connective tissue. All right. So if we go back again, what do they want you to draw? Can you get there? One more. Okay. So when they say they want you to draw. Oh, let me go back to the page. How many legs? They want a low power, so they want to see it. Right, and that's all you're going to draw. There we go. And you're going to just label it. Okay, tunica, intima, the media, the adventitia, and then your lumen. Or some of you might have muscle layer, right, connective tissue. Okay, in here you might have endothelia. Right, but there, do not forget labels and the heading. And how do we always start the heading? A biological diagram of a artery. Okay, there we go. All right, and if your teacher specific, they might even ask for a magnification. Here, describe one visible way in which this artery all right, is suited to its function. Have a look here. What would you mention? Very large layer of muscle. All right, and what does muscle do? It's able to pump the blood all right, to all areas of the body. So have a look. One visible reason from your diagram. 
Then we take the same picture. Now have a look here. Same picture. All right, now all of a sudden there is a difference. What is all of this? What is all of this? Okay. All right, what is that? What is the visible difference? This artery is blocked. All right, it's blocked with clock. Same as the clock on your teeth. Icky. Right, that's the visible difference. It's blocked. This lumen is much smaller. And now because it's much smaller, all right, you're going to have much greater pressure. So a person with arteries such as the ones in the second micrograph is at risk. Describe two severe conditions that occur. All right, from such a person, arteriosclerosis, okay, which leads to heart attack. Okay, or you could say stroke and suffer from high blood pressure. And obviously, all of that can lead to death. Are we ready for our break? Oh, we've got 13 seconds. <laughs> Belinda, can I have my 13 seconds? <laughs> I actually don't need them because I'm going to start on a new, on a new, on a new picture now. Okay. Okay. Welcome back, Mind Tickets from that break. We're going to go straight to your questions because Joe has such an awesome teacher. So, from Craig Joe, such as asking what might be the problem if the person always is standing on the left hand side? What is your opinion? That's your opinion, Sylvia. Okay. We need to be aware about that's your heart. Heart. Okay, heart attack, always. Left hand side, be careful. What do you say? Heart attack, left hand side, right, with numbness in the arm. The arm goes numb. Okay. All right. So, um, signs of a heart attack that usually occurs, right, there's obviously a sharp pain here, and also there's a tingling down the arm. Really? Yeah. Mm. It must not always be a heart attack. Some men have reflux and whatnot, these other conditions. But you know what? Always be so safe and sorry and go and check it out. Yeah. And then Sarah was asking, can we please explain the pictures in question one and must we use the formula, formula when we ask us about the implications yes. of question one? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, so, so what did I want you to ask me? Explain the picture. The picture. The picture in question one. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one. This one. That's what they want. Right. Let's have a look at the picture. They said to you, as I said to you in the beginning, diagrams A, B, and C show cross sections through three different sorts of vessels. Okay? They're not all drawn to scale. Now, if I go back here, remember what I said to you, very important. There is a difference in structure between my artery, my vein, and my capillary. Okay? When we look at an artery, we're generally going to show an area of large muscle, okay, lots of muscle. When it comes to my vein, I'm generally going to show a large lumen, which is the open space, with muscle but a lot less than in my artery. My capillary here is only one layer thick. Have a look at the red. The red is in all of these. That's endothelium, that's endothelium, and that's my endothelium. But look at these two. So I've got all these different tissues as well. Whereas my capillary, all right, is just one layer thick. So if I go back to my questions in question number one, all right, oh, there's that. What do I notice? Why did I say that this one is an artery? Look at the very thick muscle, okay? This one, only one layer thick, and look what they say to you. It's very, very, very small. What do we know about capillaries? They're very, very small. So it's an artery, all right, and a capillary. Which leads us, if you just go by the process of elimination, to a vein. But the vein says, look here, larger lumen, 
and less muscle. What is characteristic of a vape? Large aluminum and less muscle. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's go back to. I'm oh, just drawing this page over here. So let me go back to the heart. Okay. All right. Let's have a look at bypass surgery. Bypass literally means we are going to bypass that area. Okay. So I'm going to draw very simple. Here is my heart. Okay. Now in my heart here, this is a blood vessel. All right. Now what happens is if this blood vessel gets blocked, what's going to happen? It's going to, what can, what can happen is it can kill the heart muscle around it. Or what usually happens is this blockage actually causes it to rupture, the blood vessel burst. And in doing so, all right, what do we do? We destroy that, that, we, that let me, let me, if I do that, all right. There. What do you notice now? See, that area doesn't work. Now we need to bypass it. What they usually do is they take um, a vein, usually from the inside of your leg here. They take a vein, they graft it, and they put a vein, graft it on that side to that side. So what have they done? Bypass. Right, so there's the area that's not working anymore. So what do we do? We bypass it. And you'll get things like a double bypass, triple bypass. That means how many times or how many veins or that has to be bypassed. And obviously the more, the worse it's going to be. Is that it? Okay, and then how many, I think, to complete or take the complete the process? Okay. Alright, the lymphatic system is, I'm going to write to is your drainage system. Okay, your lymphatic system is your drainage system. Now let me draw it from the beginning here for you. Okay, here we've got these cells. Remember I said, alright, that's all based in this tissue fluid. Okay? Now, if you have a look at this lady's legs over here, right, you will see, right, what has happened here, this is a lot of fluid. So if I had to draw the space of cells again, and I'll use a different color, and that's all the fluid, all right, what we have, the lymphatic system, is a vessel. There we go. It's a vessel. And what happens is this tissue fluid over here drains into this lymph vessel. It now becomes known as lymph. See, hers isn't draining. Have a look at how thick your leg is. That's the fluid that's building up because this lymph vessel is not draining the blood. Right. Imagine if you've got this blood plasma pushing out and filtering. What's going to happen if you keep adding more and more water? It's going to get fuller and fuller and fuller. And your body's not going to be able to function properly. All right? So what do we need the limb for? Drainage. All right? At the end, quite simply, you put a plug when you bath. Right? Because why do you want to put a plug in? Because you want the bath water to get full. When you're finished, what do you do? You pull the plug out. So where does the water go? Out the drain. That's exactly what your limb system does. This water that's accumulated, all right, it drains back in here so you don't get that. It drains through the lymph vessel and at the top of your heart over here, there is a, a vein, the subclavian vein, means underneath the clavicle. And that fluid, all right, now enters into the right hand side of your heart. Let me put it that way. The right hand side of your heart. So it joins. So remember, we need to keep blood plasma. You've got six liters of blood, right? So what happens if we filter all of it out? Then all of a sudden we don't have any left, right? So what do we need to do? We need to return it. So our lymph is a drainage system 
to keep the tissue fluid for us constant. There we go. Drain excess tissue fluid. So the blood's going to keep on making that tissue fluid, and the lymph is going to keep on draining. Okay? But in the small intestine, what it does over here, it absorbs fat. Fats are going to be transported there in this system. Okay, proteins and carbohydrates, not. Also in the lymph system, we're going to get little lymph nodes. All right, and they're going to make lymphocytes, which are white blood cells, which help your body, all right, against diseases, bacteria, foreign ones. Okay. Why is the iliac the iliac vein? All right, those of you, when you do the iliac vein, remember, here is my pelvis, iliac. Okay, what does my iliac vein do? My iliac artery is by my hip. So my iliac artery takes blood downwards to my femoral artery to the bottom of my leg. So what is my iliac vein going to do? It's going to drain back up. All right, so all those arteries that come up, they then go to drain, and my iliac vein drains all my blood, puts it into my inferior vena cava. So not only your feet, yeah, we don't always use the word cholesterol, we tend to use the word clock. All right, um, cholesterol is a, a form of it, but we always you be very careful when we use cholesterol because you've got good cholesterol and you've got bad cholesterol. All right, so when it comes to the term cholesterol, that's why we tend to use the word clock, right, which means fatty substances. Yeah. And then we will give us some Okay. Remember what I said to you? Lymph vessels, all right, the movement of the muscles helps with the drainage of lymph. So the more you move, all right, the more you drain, the quicker your circulatory system works, and that keeps the lymph healthier. Okay, one more. Yes. Okay, so what I was asking, explain how blood plasma affects the lymph and lymph are different from one another, and then it goes up different from one another. Yes, okay. All right, let's go here. Okay. Okay, so blood plasma. Okay, lymph and tissue fluid. All right, blood plasma. It's going to have water and dissolved minerals and blood cells. All right. Lymph. Lymph will have no blood cells. What will lymph have? Water, fat, lymphocytes. Here we'll have all three red, white, and platelets. Water, fat, lymphocytes. All right. Um, it's a clear. This is a red. This is what we call opaque. What is tissue fluid? Again, water and dissolved substances. Okay, so all three of them, these are different between the two. So this is carried in blood vessels, this is carried in lymph vessels, right, and tissue fluid is not carried in any vessel, it's bathed the tissue. There we go. Alright, and I believe we are class. Mm -hmm. Thank you yeah, so much. It's so a pleasure. Thank you so much for tuning in. Until next time, from us, this is the time.